Famous physicist Michio Kaku reveals an emotional realization regarding the Grand Canyon that calls into question our common perceptions. Kaku dives into the secret truths of this iconic natural marvel, putting light on mysteries that have long been hidden. Join us on a thought-provoking journey that reveals a side of the Grand Canyon you've never seen before. Michio Kaku is a theoretical physics professor at City College of New York, a proponent of string theory, and a well-known science popularizer, having appeared on many TV shows and written several best-selling books. He recently discussed the Grand Canyon and offered some bizarre beliefs regarding the universe and aliens' connections to the Grand Canyon. So what exactly is the Grand Canyon hiding and why it isn't what we're told? The initial discovery of the Grand Canyon's hidden tunnels and treasures was attributed to an explorer named G. E. Kincaid. Accompanying him was the Smithsonian scientist S. A. Jordan. Together, they explored the intricate network of man-made tunnels, describing it as a fascinating honeycomb filled with valuable golden urns, advanced copper tools, ancient artifacts, hieroglyphs, mummified remains, and statues resembling symbols from Hindu and Egyptian cultures. The hieroglyphic tablets found within the tunnels were believed to hold the key to uncovering the mysteries of North America's prehistoric peoples, their origins, and their ancient arts. The article proposed a historical link between Egypt, the Nile, and Arizona, suggesting a connection that spanned ages and surpassed even the imagination of fiction writers. However, in more recent times, skeptical writers, academics, and representatives from the Smithsonian have dismissed this account as sensationalized and inaccurate. They view the story as a sensational fabrication designed to exploit the spiritual desires of a naive and superstitious public. At first glance, the article seems implausible and likely to be a misleading collection of fantastical tales aimed at generating profits. The true author of the article remains unknown, which casts doubts on both the believers and the skeptics. Furthermore, no subsequent articles were published to provide further insights or verification of the initial claims. The Smithsonian Institution, more than a hundred years later, has emphatically rejected the story and disavowed any documentation confirming the existence of Kincaid or Professor Jordan. According to them, the narrative asserts that an archaeologist named S. A. Jordan from the Smithsonian accompanied Kincaid to investigate the site, but this tale seems to have been exclusively published by the Arizona Gazette. The records available don't provide any evidence supporting the presence of Kincaid or Jordan. This viewpoint is largely embraced by the academic community without question. However, some alternative researchers are vociferously challenging this standpoint online, asserting that there exists a designated forbidden zone within Grand Canyon National Park. This area is supposedly off-limits for hiking, camping, or exploration. They highlight the peculiar names of landmarks within this region and even go so far as to propose that secretive branches of the federal government clandestinely oversee this entire area. In more extreme alternative circles, this perspective is just the beginning of a much larger conspiracy theory involving subterranean reptilian rulers manipulating the world's elite. The skeptical position is solidly entrenched, supported by the pillars of authority and credibility. It's easily defensible against a single article published over a century ago. An objective researcher has valid reasons to question the reliability of an article from an anonymous author in a newspaper. However, that same researcher would be somewhat credulous to unconditionally accept the mainstream narrative presented by a government institution that might have vested interests in shaping the narrative of human history. This is particularly relevant in the context of the U.S. government and its interactions with indigenous cultures during the early 1900s. The quest for truth prompts the question, whose account should one trust? In the midst of an enigma, the key to unraveling it lies in unbiased thinking. This involves setting aside preconceived ideas and navigating through evidence, avoiding the pitfalls of confirmation bias and various logical errors. One disputed fact is the existence of a cluster of elevated landforms in the park with intriguing names. Found in the Haunted Canyon and Trinity Creek region, these elevated points include geological features named after legendary figures such as Osiris, Isis, Shiva, Horus Temples, the Tower of Set, and the Pyramids of Ra and Cheops, prominent figures from ancient Egypt and India. It's important to note that determining who assigned these names and when they were given is a challenging task. Nonetheless, 
This naming likely occurred well before the publication of the 1909 article. The most probable individual behind these names is General John Wesley Powell. He led the inaugural government-funded expedition through the Grand Canyon during the 1869 Powell Geographic Expedition. Powell held roles as the initial director of the Smithsonian's Bureau of Ethnology, a founding member of the National Geographic Society and a member of the Cosmos Club. It's said that Powell's expedition faced numerous setbacks, leading to the loss of many of his notes. Yet, it's reasonable to conclude that he bestowed these names upon the landmarks. The choices he made are undoubtedly intriguing. The anonymous author of the 1909 news article appears to have taken advantage of these existing names and sensationalized them. However, this logical assumption becomes more complex when faced with the subsequent research stage, which supports the assertion that this specific portion of the park is off-limits for exploration. As expected, the official document outlining the restricted zones within the park is lengthy and difficult to digest. Yet within it, there is relevant information. It states, certain geographical areas and or roads within Grand Canyon National Park are either closed to public access or are subject to restrictions based on specific activities and or designated time frames for these activities. Notably, the document mentions several areas, including the Hopi Fire Tower and Access Road, Maricopa Point Endangered Plant Area, Hopi Salt Mines, which extend from River Mile 62 to River Mile 62.5 on the southeastern side of the Colorado River, Hans Mines south of Hans Rapid, Furnace Flats from Mile 71 to Mile 71.3 on the northern side of the Colorado River, and the Anasazi Bridge. It's crucial to recognize that these mines might not be operational mines and could potentially have never served as mines at all. Instead, they might be ancient man-made tunnels, possibly created by the Hopi people as indicated by their names. This fact alone is intriguing. The document continues by subtly indicating that no one is allowed to enter any cave or mine within the park without a permit, an authorization that is nearly impossible to obtain. It states that anthropogenic features such as mine works located in dark zones will be managed as caves following the Federal Cave Resources Protection Act of 1988. Those wishing to enter such areas are required to secure permits from the Backcountry Permits Office in adherence to these regulations. The suspicion deepens when considering the restricted areas, further compounded by a law passed in 1987 that limits airspace over only three national parks including the Grand Canyon. This legislation was purportedly enacted to restore the natural quiet and park experience while safeguarding public health and safety from the negative impacts associated with aircraft overflights. The rationale here seems puzzling. How does an aircraft flying thousands of feet above the canyon pose risks to public health and safety? And if noise is indeed a concern, why is this only applicable to these three parks and not the other 418 national parks? Interestingly, these three parks share other similarities. They all encompass areas of ancient geological upheaval, bear remnants of volcanic activity, contain unique earth deposits, feature expansive unexplored cave systems, and have native legends revolving around lost races of beings, demi-deities, and creators of the world. Is there any additional evidence of past or indigenous cultures in the nearby region? Indeed there is. The Anasazi, translated as the Ancient Ones or the Ancient Enemies, left their mark in the vicinity. They were remarkably enigmatic people scattered across the southwest and are responsible for the perplexing stone structures strewn across the landscape, perplexing experts. Noteworthy sites like Mesa Verde, Four Corners, Mummy Cave, Chaco Canyon, Stanton's Cave and the canyons of the Ancients National Monument all bear traces of the Anasazi civilization. By the time Europeans arrived, these places were abandoned, leaving behind enigmatic ruins characterized by expert masonry, often aligned with celestial events. These structures feature peculiar towers and underground sacred areas called kivas, adding to the mystery surrounding the Anasazi people. Contemporary scholars hold the view that the Anasazi people integrated into what's now known as the modern Puebloans, thereby explaining their disappearance. However, the oral traditions of the Navajo, Paiute, and Hopi tribes universally convey a different narrative. According to their traditions, the region was previously occupied by a distinct group of people who were fierce, cannibalistic, and genetically and culturally separate from them. 
these ancient enemies were eventually either driven away or wiped out, although some level of assimilation likely occurred. While investigating various sites is essential in unraveling this mystery, two sites stand out, Stanton's Cave and Mummy Cave. Stanton's Cave is located near the South Canyon Camping Beach, close to but not within the restricted area. Authorities originally believed this cave to be man-made and have since sealed it off with metal bars, ostensibly to protect an endangered bat habitat and for public safety. The cavity ceiling exhibits a clear vaulted shape, differing from natural formations. Historical records show that the cavity was inhabited in the distant past, and an official excavation in 1969-70 yielded numerous valuable artifacts. Mummy Cave, situated in Canyon de Chelly National Monument, is a few hours northeast of the Grand Canyon by car. This intriguing ancient ruin is sizable and captivating. Reports reveal that no animal bones, clothing, skins, or bedding have been found within its rooms. Numerous rooms contain only water vessels. One expansive room, about 40 by 700 feet, was likely a communal dining hall, as cooking utensils were discovered there. The sustenance these people relied upon remains a mystery, though it's presumed they migrated south in winter and farmed in valleys, returning north for summer. The caverns could comfortably have accommodated upwards of 50,000 people. One theory proposes that present-day Arizona Indian tribes are descendants of the serfs or slaves belonging to the people who inhabited this cave. It's likely that millennia before the Christian era, a highly advanced civilization thrived in this area. The term Anasazi, translated as ancient enemies, signifies a group that undoubtedly inhabited the region long before the contemporary tribes. There is concrete evidence indicating their presence and unsettling events at these sites. For instance, human remains were discovered in a disconcerting manner. In proximity to Mummy Cave lies Big Cave, situated in a section of Canyon de Chelly called Canyon del Muerto, or the Canyon of the Dead. Within this context, 14 infant remains were uncovered in a cyst lined with stone, which had previously been used as a storage container. Beneath the infants lay the bodies of four other children, tightly packed within a massive basket. Professor David Starr Jordan's close affiliation with the Smithsonian Institution spanned three decades, from the 1880s to 1910. He was involved in ichthyological expeditions along the Colorado River and into the Grand Canyon. It's worth noting that Starr wasn't his original middle name, he legally adopted it later in life. Jordan held the position of president at Stanford University and was a proponent of eugenics. His belief in primitive pseudoscience and xenophobic concerns led him to write an 1899 essay titled A Study of the Decay of Races Through the Survival of the Unfit. In this piece, he showcased irrational ideas about race degeneration and advocated significant efforts to maintain racial unity. Furthermore, Jordan spearheaded a nationwide sterilization program which is now recognized as a crime against humanity. In 2003, numerous buildings in California were stripped of his name, and the California legislature expressed deep regret for the state's role in the eugenics movement. Given these aspects of Jordan's history, it's not surprising that the Smithsonian might have commissioned him in the past to manipulate historical narratives or is now attempting to distance itself from him. Viewing the situation through a discerning lens, it becomes clear that the Smithsonian's association with Jordan has been far from transparent. The restricted areas within the park raise suspicion, particularly the prohibited zone containing names evocative of Egypt and Hindu culture, alongside evidence of ancient human-made chambers. This scenario suggests that the imperialist propaganda of the early 20th century, often tied to westward expansion and the notion of manifest destiny, may have influenced efforts to downplay the history of indigenous communities or even uphold a Darwinist perspective. Another pivotal aspect in uncovering this enigma is conducting on-the-ground research. The legal constraints imposed on the Forbidden Zone and enclosed spaces do allow for exceptions in cases of survival and distress. That's all for today's video. If you find this video interesting, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep watching!